I'm Morgan Beyer. Um, I'm a junior. I'm a history major with an anthropology minor. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Joseph Brown. Uh, I'm a history major here at uh, UK. I'm a junior. I also have an English minor and a classics minor. And uh, for a pre-law setup, I plan on going to law school after I graduate. So, so why did you uh, come to UK to study history? Um, well, I actually decided to study history. I had already been in college for two years um, doing early elementary education, and I decided that I still wanted to teach, but that teaching five-year-olds was not for me. And history is something that I'm really passionate about, and I knew I could spend the rest of my life talking about history to people every day, and it would never get boring. So I decided to switch my major to history, and after I got my associate's degree from a local community college where I'm from, I transferred to UK to get my bachelor's degree. For me, uh, when I was in high school, my senior year of high school, I debated going to Western. Uh, should I go to UK, should I go to Western? And uh, I, I, well, the deciding factor was, you know, when I applied to law school, I want a degree from a university that the admission board is going to look like. Hey, this is a, he went to a very prestigious school, and I think that uh, that won out. I'm very glad I came here. I'm very impressed with, very, yeah. very impressed, very satisfied with the department, with, uh, with what there is here. The faculty's fantastic. Oh, yeah. All of them. And that's one thing to think about when, when you go, when you're choosing where to go. You know, there's small liberal arts colleges and there's small universities, and they're going to have four, five, six historians as opposed exactly. to UK, what they're, what, 35, 34, 35 yeah, something historians like that. In the fa you know, on, on staff here. All over the board, too. Any, any sort of history you could absolutely even think about studying. There's somebody here that teaches it. There's a vibrant diversity of scholarship um, here in, in the department. You have, you have people who've been here a long time. You have like Dr. Formasano, Dr. Holly. Oh, they, absolutely. They have, decades of research behind them they really know what they're talking about but then at the same time you have you have young blood that that, that have that have that new cutting edge a new exactly uh, revisionist uh, new perspective on history like dr, dr. roberts mm -hmm. yeah exactly who and I so you really say. you get the boast of you, you get the best of every every imaginable world what do you feel that history is teaching you what are the what are the skills that you're gaining in, in your history courses well as a aspiring <laughs> law student um, history really instills that concept of precedence um, lawyers are always looking for the pre uh, in our in arguing a case. They're always looking for precedents for uh, history for for evidence that substantiates what they're trying to say. And I think that's one thing. And I've really learned since I've been here that I, that's that's really been required of me to look at sources, to look at documents, to look at books, to look at literature, to look at the facts, and to put that together and say, what does this mean? What can this tell us about a certain a certain people at a certain time or a certain event, and to make and to draw conclusions from that to yeah. to, make, to make an argument based off what you're reading, what you're seeing, what you're learning. Absolutely, I think uh, one thing for me is like not even not necessarily the specific history, but uh, the professors themselves, um, because I do want to eventually get my doctorate and teach at the college level. Um, watching them and seeing how they convey this, you know, depending on what course you're taking, hundreds or thousands of years of information in one semester and how they do that effectively and what techniques they use to get it across and it make it make sense to the students. And I think that's something that um, I really enjoy about UK is because the professors are so fantastic is that I'm getting all sorts of information to use in the future when I'm doing the same thing, trying to teach this stuff to someone else. What experiences have you had in a history class at UK that, that you think have been the most fun or the most engaging or, uh, or, or the most uh, meaningful to you? <laughs> um, I feel like we probably pretty much agree on this one. Any class that Dr. Summers teaches is absolutely fantastic. Dr. Holly as well. They are both incredibly engaging. Dr. Summers is hilarious and is so passionate about everything that he talks about and he makes it so much more interesting even if it's something that you're not particularly interested you'll care because he cares so much and it makes his class so much fun <clears throat> I remember my freshman year here um, everyone confronted me oh history that's boring no labs no exactly. in high school I, I had this conception of what a history class would be that it would be hundreds of people in a lecture hall <laughs> with an, with an 
decrepit, bent over old man reading from a book. <laughs> well, when I got here, I was very surprised. I got here and I had my first, one of my first classes I had was with Dr. Summers. <laughs> and there were eight people. It was a historical analysis of American political cartoons. Wow. And it was anything but that conception. Uh, I remember setting, setting the class and just being awestruck by his, by his, Sermonist. <laughs> Did he ever to, climb on the desks? Oh, several because times. okay, good. He has but one thing, that. but the thing, that one, <laughs> my memory is just it was it was it was an aha moment for me. It was um, we went out of class to do things. Yeah. We went to the library and looked at things. But for the for the research project, I was I found myself I was in uh, writing a uh, term paper on uh, cartoons on political cartoons, and I found myself in the Special Collections Library going through newspapers from 1825 looking for, and I was re like reading all these things, and they were like ads from, from 1990, <laughs> from like uh, 1830s, 1840s and everything. I'm like, this is really, this is investigative history. This isn't yeah. sitting in class le learning from books Absolutely. and everything. This is investigative, true scholarship. And I'm, I'm, I was happy to be involved in that. I was excited. Yeah. You know, it, it really um, surpassed what I expected here. Yeah. That's one thing I really like about Dr. Summers is not only in his smaller classes like that. Um, I'm in a class with him that's slightly larger, maybe 20 or 30 people, and uh, he actually does assignments that he makes you go to the library and look things up and find information that you didn't know before rather than just sitting and listening to him lecture. He makes you go out and do it and look for it and educate yourself and you know find something interesting to you. What, what do you do better now than you did when you first started your history degree? What, what, where, have you, where do you feel your most improvement is? Reading. Reading. I, I, yeah. I'm a much better reader. <clears throat> um, I, I know what to look for in reading. When I'm I reading, agree with that. History, history is, my history classes have trained me, but when I read something, I know what to look for. I, I, throughout high school and everything, I love to read, but I, I just didn't get the, the full, I didn't take yeah. in everything. And now I'm objective, I'm expedient in looking for the right information I, and not only looking for what's what's the big picture what's in your face but to look at small little details and be able to make it to, to construct an image to construct evidence from small details absolutely yeah I totally agree with that I think and I also love to read in high school but I think um, doing history on a college level makes it so much easier to look at something and take in all of it and be able to pick out what's important why does this matter why did they include this you know what is so important about it that they felt they had to tell me this and it, it makes it so much easier once you've had to do it for a couple of history classes you can you can get it and it's so easy what's the history class you've had that that took you the furthest away from your comfort zone history 301 i have it with dr whitlock and she teaches 301 which is a writing course that's required for all history majors um, and she teaches hers over medical legal cases yeah and it's all the books we read are about uh, legal cases that we've done physician assisted suicide, we've done insanity trials, we've studied all those different things and it's something that I'd never really looked at before so it's, um, it's very different for me uh, but it's extremely interesting and I love Dr. Whitlock, she's a great, a great teacher. <clears throat> I've had a couple courses, I'm in one right now, the first one was uh, Christian backgrounds, Jewish, Roman and, and uh, Greek backgrounds to Christianity in 150 and then the second the second part of the class I'm in right now is uh, Christians in the Roman Empire and uh, we read a lot of uh, theologians and everything yeah. and it's uh, very very complex stuff it's it's basically you know everyone expects oh it's church and you're reading reading church history and like that but it's it brings in so much it brings in uh, Platon platonic philosophy aristotelian philosophy and everything it brings so much together it's not just looking at what happened when with who it brings in so many other disciplines together in order to look into into to see into like into uh, to be able to understand what's going on it really broadens your understanding and connects you to so many different disciplines of, of education have you learned anything about other parts of the world or um, I have not ha taken very many um, courses yet that were outside of Europe and the United States. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that next semester. I'm really excited uh, to do a little bit of South American history. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, <clears throat> I had a class last semester. I did a research project on uh, 
the Romani people, gypsies in, yeah. in Europe. Uh, That's really cool. Yeah, and <laughs> that was actually very neat. I, I actually found, I did a wide range of research on gypsies, and I found out like public policy toward them and uh, their communities, their uh, their customs and everything like that. And put, and I was able to put different from different, not just different historians, but different kinds of historians, legal historians, social historians, anthropologists, yeah. and to put that together and to get a a, a, a multilateral multifaceted picture of what, what these people are like, what their history is and that and how that affects who they are today and their oh, situation yeah. today. So it has it has a very consistent bearing and implication on on modernity on on today on con, on our contemporary life, our contemporary society. And it's one thing uh, that really expanded things that I would never thought I'd be studying. You know, I never yeah. thought, "Oh, I I really want I really want to learn about them gypsies." But it was <laughs> it was really really interesting and you, I, I actually stumbled on so many things that, that sidetracked off of it, yeah. of, of, of uh, political situations, of, of, of policy toward uh, minorities in Europe, of uh, citizenship policies and everything, that I, that very interesting, uh, very fulfilling, and, and it led me into so many things that I questioned and, and learned about that, that it's really, really helped uh, define uh, <coughs> the way I look at the world and such. Good answer. One one last question. Do you have some summer plans? Um, I do. Uh, I'm actually hoping, we'll see, uh, to get into an anthropology field school. Um, it's actually going to be at the Shaker Village at Pleasant Hill, which is right outside Lexington. Um, for the first six weeks of the summer, I'll be going and doing archaeology work for credit. Um, which makes it even better because I get to do something that I'm so interested in and uh, I think will be such an amazing experience and still get to count it as a class, you know, something towards my degree, towards my minor. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Oh, I'm, I'm very psyched about this summer. I got hired um, by the National Park Service to work as a, as a park guide at Mammoth Cave National Park and I'll so actually cool. be uh, giving tours through the cave um, through what they call the historic tour, that my my primary duty will be to, to educate the public on the history of the cave, and uh, I was competing. I, I talked to the the human the resources human resources lady out there, and she said that I was competing against I think uh, anthropology student from U of L, uh, geology student from Western, someone someone from Chicago, different schools. Yeah. But I won out, and I, I'm 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 pretty sure that being a history student from oh. UK, you know, was a very deciding factor. Oh, hey, I'm here's sure. a here's a very distinguished accomplished history student from UK we, we need this we're In looking for state. this yeah absolutely yeah. I'm sure that's fantastic yeah, I'm really I'm really excited so are you gonna have to, to do that are you gonna have to do like a like a course are they gonna have to tell you what to say I have two weeks of training but they they, <laughs> they said that uh, not to brag on myself or anything that but to brag on the department they said that that um, I was so well versed in history that that they know they normally don't start um, students in the cave giving tours awesome. that they, they actually have them in the office and things like that but they said they're gonna they uh, promoted me up to uh, the GS5 the GS4 level rather than GS3 pay scale and so they put me in the cave above my merits and also um, Very cool. there's a chapter of Phi Alpha Theta on campus it's a historical honor society and one of the perks in being in this in this history organization is increased federal pay that's awesome so Making making pretty good money this semester because yeah. for history for my history my historical background. That's fantastic.